welcome to another unboxing and build and this time it's the Japanese Type 95 tank so called Hargo and this kit is quite expensive in the UK it costs about £40 so I found a place in Japan that sold them for 20 and decided to mail order it in total it came to about £30 so I saved myself 10 and it arrived in 11 days which wasn't too bad at all I don't think and I also seem to have avoided VAT which I'm very pleased about so let's look inside the box. We've got the usual pleasantries and some wrapping paper, which I think is an old Japanese newspaper. Uh, this puzzled me. I thought this was a sweet at first, some sort of candy, but it's a little eraser, a little thank you present from Japan Plaza. And here is the tank itself. Now there are two fine mold kits of this tank. There's an early 1939 kit is based on the type of tank you'd have seen at the Kalakin Goal campaign that's in Soviet Russia but I went for this one this is a Malay Peninsula tank dated around 1941-1942 and I just thought it looks a bit more interesting than the Kalakin Goal one nice little note on the side of the box here dear delivery person thank you for the delivery this is a package delivered to an important person which is me and is looking forward to its arrival please take extra care nice little touch let's have a look through the box I sometimes look at these parts individually but I always miss stuff there's no point really so what I will do is have a quick look through if there's any obvious errors or mistakes parts missing I'll let you know well here we go it's a simple kit there are only two bags inside We've got the wheels there and the rest of the tank here We've got the decals up there and here's the instructions, mostly in Japanese. This part obviously telling you about the history of the tank. Uh, the instructions look very clear, uh, very pleased. There's really no way you can make a mistake with these. And inside it tells you that there are two level up kits, two additional sets of photo etched parts you can get. And I do actually buy one of the level up kits. I'll introduce that later on. And here's the camouflage pattern at the back. And this is for 3rd Company, 1st Tank Regiment, Malay Peninsula, 1942. And then we've got the decal arrangements on the back. And at the top, this is the decals for 1st Company, 1st Tank Regiment. Then it's 4th Company, 1st Tank Regiment. And at the bottom, you've got Unit Unknown. Quite mysterious. Yeah, a nice, clean-looking little kit. And there's no interior detail, which suits me, because I don't usually have my tanks open to show it. Slight change of scenery here, we're out in the greenhouse again. Here's the decal pack. And on the back, that is the photo etched parts that you get with the main kit. And that is just a cowling for the exhaust you can see there. And a few other oddments. But here is the level up kit I bought. And this was from another Japanese company called Hobby Search. And the total cost of this came to £17.31, which is a lot of money really. So the basic kit cost about eight and the rest is postage. Uh, so you don't get a huge amount of your money, but there's obviously quite a lot of interest there. Though as it turns out, I don't use nearly all these parts. In fact, I only use quite a small proportion. Before I go on, I ought to say something about the box art, which is actually very spectacular. This is probably the best box art I've seen on any tank kit to date. And this image is something that you could easily hang on the wall if you wanted to. So top marks to the artist and the designer. That's outstanding, I think. So here's our basic tank with quite a lot of the level up kit applied to it. Looking quite neat. I built it with the driver's hatch in the open position. I could have had the top open as well. There are additional pieces that let you do that, but I decided against it. Here's the cowling at the back. So this is from the level up kit. However, there are some parts of the level up kit, like the grill beneath these vents that you won't see when the model is painted, so they're really not worth it. Here's the cowling from the basic kit, and you can see that the level up kit has a slightly more elaborate version. And the kit actually comes with a little former to help you bend this into the right shape. I thought this might be part of the tank when I first saw it, but it's just a little former to help you bend it correctly. Unfortunately, a lot of the detail in the level up kit is surplus requirements. For example, this is an army version of the tank. And if you wanted to change it to a navy version, you'd have to scrape off that star and then stick on a little anchor. Weirdly, you can see the middle of the sheet. There is a pair of glasses that you're meant to put on a, a figure if you've got one. 
Here's the instructions for the level up kit. Rather confusing, unfortunately, unlike the instructions for the main kit. For example, we've got these strange rectangles, which are meant to sit underneath here, and they look like they might be rubber mud scrapers or something like that. But really quite mysterious. It seems an odd place to put scrapers, but there you go. Color scheme says to paint them in black, which suggests they are rubber. But I couldn't be bothered with most of that. I just stuck the ones on at the front. Overall, for £17, I don't think the level up kit was worth it, frankly. A lot of this detail is going to get obscured by paint anyway. The only important part is the cowling at the back, which you get as part of the basic kit. Here's the tank painted up in yellow. You might wonder why I've done it all over in yellow. And the reason is I was going to emulate a camouflage pattern I saw in a video from the Bovington Tank Museum. They've got a Type 95 tank there, which is covered in flecks of this yellow paint and also flecks of brown, ochre, black, etc. And what I was going to do was use a new painting technique. I was going to use some rubber masking fluid, dab that over the, the tank to preserve the yellow layer, then repaint it, dab on some more masking fluid and then carry on until I'd covered all the colours. Um, unfortunately, I discovered later on that the Bovington Tank Museum camouflage pan is, is totally bogus, something they admit in their video on the subject. You do get yellow paint on these tanks, but the paint is applied as stripes. And there's three separate patterns. You can either have a stripe going from the front of the tank to the back, or from side to side, or there's the option of combining the two, so they form like a cross with the two lines are meeting at the top. And this camouflage pattern is meant to be useful in jungle warfare in that it mimics streaks of light going across the jungle floor, helping to break up the outline of the tank. So my first job here is to apply masking fluid to preserve those two stripes. So I'm going to go for the two stripe model. Then apply the next layer of paint, mask that off, then the next layer, and after that the next layer. And I think there's four different colours I used. I used this yellow, I used like a jungle green, a light ochre and a dark brown and those are the standard Japanese camouflage colors although apparently towards the end of the war they dropped the yellow striping so here's the poor little 95 all painted up like I said there's four layers of paint on this not including the primer and it is also covered in loads and loads of masking fluid as well unfortunately so much paint on this tank has obscured quite a few of the more subtle details which is a shame but the job now is to remove the masking fluid so let's start at the top. Quite a fiddly job. And in the end I did go and get a pair of tweezers to make this a little bit easier. Quite alarmingly the, the paint flakes quite badly, leaving quite jagged edges to these lines, which is not what I was expecting. I was hoping it might pull off a bit more cleanly than this. The paint is very flaky indeed, unfortunately. Here come the tweezers, makes it slightly easier. But let's speed up the process a little bit, otherwise we will be here all day. I have to say I did quite enjoy this bit. <laughs> it's fiddly but it's good fun. There we go, that is 95% of the rubber masking pulls off. It looks a bit rough, doesn't it, to be honest with you? It looks pretty rough indeed. Not the effect I was hoping for. And some of these camouflage crossover lines, I think, are wrong. Now at this stage, I did seriously consider just stripping off all this paint and starting from scratch. However, I did do some more work on it. I think I salvaged the situation somewhat. The first job being to go over the whole tank with a stiff brush and knock off any little flecks of paint that were left. And here we go, here is the finished tank, or as finished as I want to make it. As I said, after I went over it with a stiff brush, I cracked open the paint and tidied up some of these lines. When they looked a bit ragged, I smoothed them out. And I joined up some lines so they looked a little bit more realistic. To try and calm down the colors, which were a bit bright, I then did a dry brush with some oil paint it was dark ochre and black. 
And I think they produce quite a nice effect. Looks like smoke staining across a lot of the top of the tank. And thereafter is a question of doing pin washes here and there to bring out the details. And a light layer of dust. And I also stuck down some bits of vegetation. Which I think have worked. This is the first time I've tried doing that. I avoided putting a lot of mud on the wheels, which is what I normally do. I think that can be a bit of a cop out sometimes. And I also painted up some of the surface detail, like the tools, the spade, the spade and the pickaxe. But I think that's looking fairly respectable. The initial paint job looked really bright and unnatural, but this, I think, looks a lot better. I hope you'll agree. And this was an excellent kit. This is probably the best kit as far as fitting goes that I've come across. And the tracks work perfectly, which is a first for me. I normally find a way of messing up the tracks. But these were faultless, really, really good. So there we go, there's the Type 95 Hargo. So I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you found it useful, and I hope to see you again soon for the next one. Okay then, cheerio.